Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and I've got a few things laid out here to feed the worms with. It's just some, you can see some leafy greens, some banana peels, other various kitchen scraps, as well as a um, number of pieces of just some vegetable it was in a soup and the, the chunks were far, fairly large. So I just took a knife to it and just put it into little slices and I let it sit out here since last night drying off a little bit. So I'm going to include that in today's feeding. The bins that I want to feed today are my red wigglers, which are not my two youngest. The two youngest got fed just a couple days ago, three days ago. They're uh, right here on the list. The top of the list shows the youngest, the 20 and 39 day old ones that just got fed three days ago. It's the, um, it's the 61 day old and the 91 day old bins that I plan to feed today. Uh, it's been 10 days and nine days since those were last fed. The oldest bin, the 134 day old bin, I've decided that that's going to um, not get fed today. In fact, I think we're going to go in there and we're going to see if we can actually pick out any large scraps of food so that um, that last feeding nine days ago, its 18th feeding, is actually going to become its last feeding and then it's going to formally go into this foraging mode that I refer to it as where the foraging implies that they're going to pick through all the little tiny scraps of material within the bin, hopefully leaving the bin as just, you know, a tub full of really beautiful clean castings with minimum debris in it, um, but to try to help focus their energy on all those little scraps, we'll be pulling out any large scraps we might find in there, uh, old leftovers. So we'll start with the oldest one, take care of that, and then we'll move on to feeding the other two. All right, let's get started. So now here, within the oldest of the bins, the 134 day old bin, that last feeding nine days ago would have occurred, if I'm not mistaken, in a rotational pattern where we'd been feeding around the corners of the bins rather than feeding down the middle, which is my typical feeding method. We were feeding around the corners to give us a little bit clearer visibility into each individual specific previous feeding. So that, you know, in here, nine days ago, we fed, so we could see how far things have come in nine days, but it was now, I guess, seven days 16 days since this was fed i think it was seven day intervals in between this was the first time we broke from a seven day pattern so that we can probably just calculate pretty easily how old something is if we bump into it my hope is that we bump into minimal stuff like that so that we don't have to take as much out as you know maybe an entire feeding although i would think that after nine days whatever might exist in this old feeding is hopefully um minimal Let's check there first. This, I suppose, wouldn't really be needed anymore, right? At this point, there will be technically <laughs> no last feeding location. And I even thought about just not having this on here either, because this will also eventually all end up becoming um, worm food. You can see, you know, evidence of some nibbling already here on the edge. And, uh... Do we want this to be a distraction from them clearing out the contents of the bin and really foraging through um, eating everything else? I mean, I'd really like for them to focus. And I really don't know what to expect from this stuff either. I had originally cut the, these pieces of paper with the shredder, pretty much all of it. I don't think any of it was torn, so it all should have pretty clean cut edges. And considering how much time it's been spending in the bins, none of them seem to have anything but those original nice clean cut straight edges you know not like a piece of um paper where the worms are clearly nibbling away at it like on this corner here that's what i keep looking for on those strips of paper that are scattered within the material but i never see it and it makes me wonder if there's something wrong with that paper if it's ever going to get consumed perhaps there's something about it that the worms just don't like or maybe it's something um you know holding back the natural breakdown process where, um, you know, maybe, maybe it was treated in some way and it's going to just last what, way longer than expected. So uh, let's get this covering off too and this will give us direct access. Like I said, we're kind of unfeeding. If we find anything big, we could just throw it into this feeding tray. Um, so we, we've got it handy for when we next feed. Um, let's see. If this was the last feeding zone, this might be where we would expect to find some large chunks of leftover if there are any. I thought I felt a stick or a stem or something like that. So why don't we move that along instead of having that sit behind here and 
in this bin and never get broken down. This stuff is super damp over here on this corner. I guess the plastic paper coverings that I've been using to keep these things from drying out have really worked quite nicely. It's these sticks and stems. These are the things that I always like, I'm torn on. Do I want to take it out or just let, you know, let this really ultimately be the measure of whether the bin is finished or not, if all those are pretty small. And that's kind of always been my approach, so I'm going to stick to that. I'm not going to start getting down into picking out um, leaf stems out of a bin that I want to drive towards completion. So I kind of broke through, for the most part, all the material I picked out of that hole. I don't see anything else. It's almost all just castings. Maybe it's intermingled with some leftovers, but that kind of tells me that if we go back much further, unless it was some sort of a really slow composting item, we're probably we're probably not going to find many traces of anything. But let's let's do our due diligence. Let's pick through and see what we see. This is um this is actually not the last feeding zone. That was the last feeding zone. This is going a little further back. You can see it's definitely where the um, worm party is happening. <laughs> wow. Or maybe did I, did I mislabel? No, I mean, no, that was the longest going back. That was, oh, the, the most current one we haven't even looked at yet, right? So, all right, don't know what to expect. We're um, going back, I guess, two and a half weeks at this point. If I find anything big, whatever, the game plan is to pick it out, right, and feed it to the other worms instead. Let these guys refocus their attention on other things. I thought I saw other good-sized bits in here that could probably go. Here, whatever it is, is kind of like intermingled with the, the paper bedding that it was fed with. So we'll remove both together. Anything else that's just already sort of blended in, surrounded with castings, I'm not going to go crazy trying to pick through and pick out. Um, anything like that. If I find good good sized chunks, they can come out, a banana stem, something like that, like we already removed, but everything else I think is just going to stay with the material. So there too, I think they did a really nice job. Here's another um, banana stem. But other than that, I think there was, yeah, here and there, a little stick, which is so weird. I should never even put stuff like that into my worm bins. It'll just take forever. Alrighty. Nice busy bin. Almost busier than I anticipated. I didn't think there were this many worms in this container, but maybe they've just multiplied. I do see lot, lots of them that are really puny ones, right? Lots of small size ones mixed in with larger size ones. A good cross section of different ages. I think we've got one other kind of bundle here, food bundle, still kind of in its paper wrapping, just like we had before. Now we've got two of them to feed to the other bins. We'll share, we'll give one to one bin, one to the other bin. <laughs> I do have a slight sense of smelling some old food that's, I guess, still breaking down. This is an old banana peel. if we're going to find another one of those. Those sometimes do take a little while. They go, but they take a little while sometimes. All right, so I don't want to go overboard here. I think I've already removed a couple good things, and we're not even at the most recent feeding yet, so let's make sure we've taken anything that we want to remove from there too before we set this bin aside for foraging. Here too, I would have probably bundled food into paper, and that paper might not really be completely eaten up yet. So in most cases, I think that that's what's probably going to come along for the ride and be excluded. If it's just some pasty food that's almost broken down, it's already liquefied, I think the worms can take care of sucking that stuff up. We'll leave them that. I guess a couple worms are going to go for a ride too. But for the most part, I think we've successfully unfed this container for the most part. Hopefully they got the better portion of that last feeding as opposed to 
me removing it from them. I didn't want to like take away the last portion they were given. I just wanted to um, reduce it down to stuff that's going to break down pretty quickly. And I think that's all we've got now. We've got a bin that's nice and busy, nice and damp, good number of worms, and all the large chunks that they were eating have been for the most part removed, leaving them with plenty of remaining, as you saw. This stuff is chock full of all kinds of stuff to eat. And it is pretty much all over the place. There's no one focused area anymore where there was a feeding or there wasn't a feeding at this point as far as I'm considering this. This is a completely sort of agitated environment. All I'm really going to try to do now is level it off to a certain point because I just like to leave things in a sort of level state if I can. Sometimes just a, a visual clue is provided by maybe one section dipping down a lot or not getting consumed much and remaining kind of thick and when you start out with a flat surface, then you kind of enable yourself to have access to those types of subtle clues if they ever present themselves. All right, very cool. I guess we will not put the feeding zone indicator back on, but I will also give them this. And I know that this is also act as food and distraction for them, but I, um, I just like to have a little something between the bedding and the plastic covering because the plastic covering is going back for sure we want that doing its job keeping the moisture down within the bin even though it's kind of damp I think it's vital to keep it that way make it into a really cozy spot for the worms to be and um, and I think that can only be done if you limit the amount of evaporation happening within the bin okay Okay, I guess we got a little extra bedding here too. We're gonna to just treat this as reclaimed and to be reused so it can just go in as bedding into the other feeding um, that we're gonna do. This wasn't a feeding though, the feedings that we're gonna, we're about to do. <laughs> so let's move on. Let's get to feeding these other uh, red redwood bins. All right, this is a nice size bin. This is the bin actually that I had originally thought would take over as the bin to finish sooner than the bin that we just sort of set down the, the finishing path towards getting harvested at some point soon. Um, but recently I kind of had a change of heart and I thought to myself, you know what, let's just keep on going with this one. It's a, it's a slightly larger container. It's a little bit wider than a lot of my other containers. It's also amongst the deeper of the containers too. So it's got the space in it, I believe, to support at least a few more feedings. And the feeding that we have today is, you know, a lot of stuff that's already partially broken down from already being in a worm bin, as well as a, a bunch of other stuff that's all had been frozen and cooked and stuff that I believe is probably going to break down pretty rapidly. And it's not all that much either. I mean, it's, it's a good portion, perhaps average, I would say. In this bin, we're kind of doing this um, pocket feeding thing, as I alluded to earlier. I believe this is one that had been um, fed in the corners um, since the start, and I believe we go back to here. So this is the last corner that we're going to feed today, which has not yet been fed. So we always have the option to go back in here and take a look at what things look like nine days ago, for after nine days of um, composting. Prior to that, it was another week. So back to here will be um, nine days, 16 days, and so forth. Um, working our way from most recent feeding to older and older feedings. We can reuse this feeding zone indicator. It's in really good shape. We'll just set this aside and cover up at the end with it to mark where we last fed. And we'll feed right there at the end. But why don't we just take a quick peek back to see how things are progressing in the most recent feeding from nine days ago. There we go some leftovers right there. There's a banana stem. As my fingers want to kind of work their way up through the material, I can sense where there's, you know, elements of the most recent feeding. 
everything else just sort of slips through my fingers, the worms and the, the castings. So, um, I guess that's like a pit. <laughs> so these guys are definitely working this um, feeding zone actively. I mean, there was that pit. There was a couple chunks of banana peel, like the stem, basically. And I've put it all right back where it came from. Man, this bin is something else. They just, like, chomp right through anything you give them. So uh, I think the same is going to happen to what we give them today. <laughs> all this um, pretty well-cooked and frozen stuff that as it thaws, it's going to get all soft and gooey. I'm guessing if we go back even further at this point, yeah, the material here is super broken down. I mean, the stuff I am coming up with are probably either avocado seeds or maybe mango seeds, the outer husk. A couple chunks of bedding, but geez, these worms have done away with everything you give them. What's this? <laughs> Another pit. These things, I don't even know why I bother. It seems silly. I've never seen one break down, but then again, I've only recently started to actually place them into my bins. Usually I would just not put them in my bins. Whatever. Let's put all that stuff right back where it was. <laughs> Chalks up to that much breakdown over that much time. Avocado pit. These are the things that I just can't seem to resist trying to break every time. Because eventually it does get soft enough where you can just break it with your fingers. And, um, you know, after every additional week's worth of progress of it, you know, breaking down in the bin, you always wonder... Um, Am I there yet? Are we close? Are we gonna break? Are we gonna be able to snap that avocado seed in half today? And I guess in this case, today was not the day. <laughs> All right. So now we're at, we're going quite a ways back, you know. So here, I don't know what to expect. Jeez. Hopefully, just castings. Oh, geez, I remember these. <laughs> it's another pit, but yeah, here's some. Uh, Hunks of radish. Jeez, they're taking a long time. I thought they'd be broken down a little bit at least by now. But they don't really seem like they're getting very worked. Eh, whatever. Put them back where they were. That's pretty much all I remember from that from that um, series of feedings. Here's another. I don't know if it's that same pit we saw earlier. So the pits, you know, not holding my breath for those things. That's for sure. <laughs> all right, let's administer today's feeding. And move on over here this is just going way back nothing recently added into here maybe stuff that kind of um, I mean maybe stuff that kind of washed out from the middle feedings that had been occurring before the pocket feeding began so maybe some stuff out here on the edge but otherwise it's just a whole bunch of really nice fine castings gosh the next time we feed this bin it'll probably be already if not very close to 100 days old i guess depending no you know i guess what we're feeding today is not that much so i don't think i'll wait that long between between now and the next feeding so it'll probably not be 100 days old yet when we next feed this bin let's see what we got here to um, give them today i guess we'll start with this layout of cooked veggies sliced up cooked veggies that didn't really dry much but they kind of come in their own little burrito of um, bedding material it's a nice little bonus and if we look at some of the feeding materials it is actually bedding material so it kind of already comes with its own <laughs> bedding material plus some food scraps that still linger within it so we'll place all that old aged material down there along with this little burrito and uh, I guess everything that would classify as being relatively fresh and new just come right off the bottom of the tray here we'll put that in its own little burrito as well <laughs> nice little boost of uh, additional bedding although you know for a bin that's already at this age um, not sure how much more of that sort of stuff I want to keep adding at some point I might just start reusing the um, previous amounts of carbon that had been placed in here as bedding and a supplement to their feeding but not add any more give it all stuff a chance to break down all right very nice let's uh let's indicate where we fed with our traditional coffee filter and 
get things covered back up. A little worm here, a little worm there. I think earlier, before I started moving the piece of paper around, I saw um, cocoons rolling off of it too. But uh, I was a little bit hasty, so I didn't take the time to look it over. Get things here covered back up. These um, these plastic bags are nice, but this container is still just a little bit bigger than the bag. So it's always allowing for a little bit of airflow on the edges, but not much. Hardly any, actually, but I guess just enough to keep things really nice in here. All right. One more to go. All right. So I guess same as the last bin where I had the little story about um, how I thought that that bin was going to kind of surpass what's now serving as our oldest bin that's in foraging mode. Um, this one has a little story too. This one's interesting because it's not just red wigglers. There's mostly, I believe, red wigglers in here, but I think it's mixed with both um, blues and euros, if I'm not mistaken. So it's kind of uh, my one bin in which, my only bin in which I've got any sort of access to blue worms. I'm just finding a couple little worms on the uh, plastic we just removed. Let's, uh, let's put this over there just in case I missed anyone. Maybe they have some some place to go to crawl over to and take shelter. You know what we'll do? Let's reuse this as a burrito for today's feeding. We'll just pile some of the, uh, I guess, the fresh stuff from today down into the burrito. <laughs> and uh, then what we can do is we can upgrade them with a nice fresh new one. Okay, what do we do? Here we can really clearly see the <laughs> most recent um, pocket feeding in the corner. Not only did we have a coffee filter indicating to us where that occurred, but we've also got a big, huge pile of bedding that got laid in on top of the food as well. I think this, a lot of this bedding might have actually moved with the last feeding. I don't know if this was placed in here fresh last time or it was just salvaged from the previous pot pile. I think what we'll do is we'll cover up with this stuff at the end and we'll try to keep this fresh pile of bedding going with the with the most current feeding zone location and this would give us access to the feeding zone I'm wondering if all this little white stuff is mites it's hard to tell I've had mites in some of my bins lately if this was the most recent feeding area wouldn't be too surprising if there was some mites attacking it and taking advantage of it. So I do see some, I believe, um, sweet potato chunks. I don't remember what else was in here. I don't hardly see any signs of it, whatever it was. And obviously some of the, the paper that went in there as bedding too that went with the feeding. All getting a great job um, getting broken down, as you can see. We'll let them continue here too. We're going back a little ways to get to the even um, older feeding area by one. Is this the one that's 10 days at this point? Yeah, this is going back 10 days now um, to that last feeding. So a week before that was 17 days to here. Yeah, look at that. Not much left, just some sort of a chunk of a stem of something. See little pieces of leaves and leaf stems, but not much of anything else. I think the leaves were used as bedding even back then too. So other than that one tougher piece of um, shell or uh, husk off of the seed or whatever that was, that feeding area is showing hardly any signs of leftovers. Here we'd be going back even further. Another week prior to that, I would guess. And here we've got some definite signs of leftovers. This is, um, I guess, part of a avocado seed, one that I've probably already broken or just it cracked in half. It looks so freshly um, opened. I guess it's starting to fall apart. What have we here? Just wonder what these little tiny brown specks are. Are they some sort of a creature? It's hard to tell if they're even moving. 
They don't look like worms. They don't look like mites. They are moving. They're moving really slow. Well, if it is a problem, I hope it remains isolated back in this corner, which is where we excavated it from. Maybe us just giving uh, the area a little bit of air flow by turning things up and picking through uh, might help with the breakdown process and whatever these things are. Maybe they're helping with the breakdown process too. But we'll put it all right back where we dug it out of. And then it's going to be our way to flash back to see how those things are coming along in a future feeding. So we can uh, plop in the feeding for today into this section, which is the last corner again here too. So prior to the pocket feedings, there would have been feedings down the middle. So if we maybe picked around on this side, we might find some traces of worm activity. Gosh, some of these worms are so dark in color, so stocky, weird. <laughs> All right. Here too, I made a nice little burrito out of this uh, stuff that was laid out on this piece of newspaper to dry. It's not dry, it's pretty damp. It's all well cooked um, vegetables out of the soup. Yeah, some of the vegetables stay in the soup, right? Keep the carrots and the, you know, the yummy stuff like that, but other things just don't maybe have the right texture or right flavor to be eaten with the soup. So some of the, some of the soup greens are only in there to get, um, contribute their flavor <laughs> and then get pulled out when it comes time to serve the food. A couple little bits to include, but eh, I guess it doesn't really amount to that much. <laughs> All right, let's get this feeding covered up. Did I have anything else? I don't think so. I guess besides uh, besides our feeding zone indicator, we've also in here got this nice little pile of fresh leafy matter for the worms to come up and take advantage of too, should they wish to. I'll try to get as much of it over there on top of the feeding as possible. I guess everything else that remains scattered out here will be just fair game. Okay, things are looking very nice in here. And this is, geez... Not even that old. 61 days, so, you know, two months old. But it's making such really, you know, really nice progress, I must say. This poor paper, every time I touch it, it feels like I'm tearing it. <laughs> oh, there I go again. I think I just stuck my finger through over there. So I'm gonna leave it be. I think we can clearly um, see that everything's neatly covered. And we're even indicating where we fed twice to make it really easy for us to come back and locate it again later. So this bin's not quite as wide, so we should be able to cover up quite thoroughly with this plastic bag. It's the same plastic bag, but since we're just a little bit narrower in this bin, this bin gets really nicely covered with these red plastic bags. So that was fun. There's not much left to do here in terms of cleaning up. I've just got a couple things I've got to rinse off, but I'm not going to take your time with that. Before I go, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. If you haven't done so already, also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.